What's up guys? So today we're going to be looking at the evolution of superheroes on screen. Um, and I've got a New York Times uh, article here. It's going to sort of um, be sort of the, the base that I'll use to uh, present this video. Um, I will link it in the description below as well as my third fast. If you yourself uh, are feeling particularly uh, heroic today, um, even if you're not wearing a cape, um, click that link, go um, donate um, and support the cause of FebFast uh, and help uh, enable young people who are experiencing um, disadvantage um, to access the resources and the support that they need to lead fulfilling lives, um, help to build a community um, where they are valued and included, have every opportunity to thrive um, by helping to reduce the frequency and severity of alcohol, drug and mental health related issues as well as antisocial and self-harming behaviour. Um, so this link wants to work, it's getting a bit slow. Alright, so the title of this article is Superheroes on Screen, The Evolution of an Ideal. Uh, I'm going to come down to... Alright, so amongst its opening here, the 16 films and TV shows below are a guided flight through the evolution of this modern day pantheon. Okay, so the first uh, on this list is Adventures of Superman, which is, I believe, a TV show, um, which ran from 1952 to 1958, um, and it, it reads, when uh, Jerry Seigel and Joe Shuster um, created Superman in 1938, they invented an entire genre. Fittingly, their character's live action incarnation became the first superhero superstar. The actor responsible was George Reeves, who brought the Man of Steel and his alter ego Clark Kent to square George Barrel Chest of Life in the long running syndicated TV series Adventures of Superman. Um, but while Superman commanded the adoration of millions of children, the actor who played him had some secrets of his own. Um, it says here that um, Reeves ended up being uh, typecast as a man of steel type uh, and he died of a gunshot wound to the head at age 45 which was ruled as an apparent suicide although suspicions of foul play never fully subsided. Um, among other reasons, he was having an affair with the wife of an MGM studio fixer who had ties to the mob, which is always fun. Uh, as an allegory for the dark side of the post-war decades, postcard perfection, Reeves' story was something called, something was like something out of a movie, which it became in 2006 in the fictionalized true, true crime drama Hollywood Land. Uh, the next on the list is the 1966 to 1968 Batman, um, starring Adam West. Um, the main differences, just in TV in general, is that this one's in colour, where The Adventures of Superman was a black and white. Um, what's it say here? Is it how it... Um, So this remains the definitive example of superheroes who capture their moment. The show's camp crusader sensibility owed nearly as much uh, to the pop art irony of um, Roy Lichtenstein, Lichtenstein, who designed the show's first TV guide cover as to the work of the characters original comic book creators Bill Finger, Bob Kane and Jerry Robinson. With its adult kid sneaker at the setup of with an adult could sneaker at the setup of a straight culture embodied by an impossibly corny dynamic duo while the skin tight get up of Billy Newmars, uh, Catwoman and the little bat in the window uh, 
the share the slightly naughty air of Johnny Carson with the wolf and Twister on the Tonight Show. For children, however, Batman Fuge provided a window into the colourful world of lighter than life characters delivering justice with the soft demand of Cesar Romero's Joker. Uh, this version of Batman remained the public face of the character and the genre and even, and even the entire medium of comics for over two decades after it debuted. Um, we then have our first in, I think there's a few of these, but it's not Marvel or DC. Uh, we've got 1968's Barbarella, an adaptation of a comic by French uh, cartoonist Jean-Claude uh, Forrest. It was a very a la mode uh, blend of liberation and leering, um, starring a, a splendid and charismatic Jane Fonda as the spacefaring adventurer who in whose encounters get very close indeed. The film sealed her status as a sex symbol and remains a landmark in her career uh, as an act of, of symbolic cinematic rebellion by the boomers against the generation of Fonda's father. It's right up there with Easy Rider uh, by her brother Peter. Today, the science fantasy genre bending of Barbara Ellis seems positively pioneering with echoes everywhere from the Star Wars franchise to Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. But while superheroes are frequently sexy, rarely are they sexual. This points to a still wider road not taken following Barbarella. Superhero stories in which drives and desires other than redemptive violence motivate the main characters. Um, and so obviously uh, that is therefore the first film on our list as well. Um, next on the list is uh, Wonder Woman and the New Adventures of Wonder Woman. Uh, which ran from 75 to 79. It's the uh, Linda Carter uh, Wonder Woman show. Um, Actors have looked more at home in superhero costume, into which the character changed by way of a spinning transformation devi um, devised by Carter. The success of, the, of this blend of Batman style lunchbox friendly action comedy and Barbara style live action pin up appeal falls squarely on her shoulders. We then have um, Superman the movie 1978 um, when. Uh, Christopher Reeves um, and here, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, I believe, uh, ma were able to make a man fly. Um, the visual effects, the visual effects, most notably by the front projection system, uh, by front by the Zoptic front projection system, that made Superman's flight convincing, won an Oscar. Um, it had, at the time, a star-studded supporting cast. Um, had Marlon Brando as Drot L, Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. Um, Christopher Reed in a performance so effortlessly charming yet rooted in thoughtful physicality, it forever associated him with the role. His instantaneous changing posture and expression when he switches between Superman and Clark Kent remains a wonder to behold. Um, the next one on the list is the original Robocop from 87. Despite the success of Superman and its even better sequel, Superman 2, the standard superhero seemed a little less seemed a little superfluous in the 80s, with President Ronald Reagan telling tales of good versus evil straight out of a comic book. Um, and action stars like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis sculpting their physics to cartoon worthy levels, we needed spandex. And to Robocop, the sci fi satirist pulled the whole the Hoovens, black and black comedy. An ultra-violent, 
action hero in drag. And it is dope in the future where hospitals are driven by profit and police departments use military grade weaponry. Um, a badly wounded Wookiee cop is feared by a creepy corporation with cybernetic enhancements that increase his lethality but wipe out his memory. The story of the super cop literally fighting against his own programming in order to reclaim his humanity in a city being stripped of parts by the super rich is now is as poignant now as it was in Reagan's America. Um, the 1989 Batman is the next one. Almost as soon as the TV show Batman went off the air, darker material began to ferment in the comic book depictions of the Cape Crusader and his peers. Uh, Batman was the blockbuster that brought this grimmer version roaring into multiplexes and the mainstream consciousness. Uh, directed with confident neo noir style by Tim Burton, the movies pivoted off works like the cartoonist Frank Miller. Um, like, I don't know what the word cut the is there. Pivoted off works like Cartoonist Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns and employed a, an array of talent. Um, the composer Danny Elfman, uh, production designer Anton First, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, um, both as Batman and the Joker, respectively, um, working out on the, their career peaks. While Batman remains one of genre's best films, the best, uh, if you want that particular um, journalist's opinion. Uh, its industry innovations sometimes overshadow its aesthetic excellence. The movie's PG-13 rating became standard for tentpole movies, while its record-breaking box office enshrined opening weekend revenue as a key measurement of a film's success. Batman was, a, was an inescapable last gasp of big 80s monoculture, that, sim that, that summer, the bat symbol was nearly as ubiquitous as Coca-Cola. Uh, in 1994, we got The Crow, um, which, let's be honest, is amazing. Uh, and uh, I know it is later on this list, but we should really sort of look at this as being where the, the, the modern superhero film came from. Um, because throughout the 90s, most of the superhero films were this grunge look, probably inspired by the Batman movies, if we want to go back that far as well. Um, but the gaps between films are obviously getting shorter now. Uh, James O'Barr's cult favourite black and white comic, The Crow, centres on a beautiful young man named Eric Craven, who is killed by a gang during a vicious sexual assault on his girlfriend, and then resurrected to kill them one by one, like a cross between Batman and Jason from Friday the 13th. For his live action adaptation, director Alex Poyer simply imported the comic's aesthetic, gave it a slight tweak for the post Nirvana era. Saturated with songs from alt Michael's rock bands like The Cure, Nine Channels, and Stone Temple Pilots, I mean, it is a pretty good soundtrack. Um, I, I could pretty much just listen to the soundtrack. It's it's pretty good. Um, it's so unrelentingly dark that it crosses the threshold of self parody, passes right into the sublime. Um, but the lasting story of this film is the one about its star, Brandon Lee, son of um, martial arts legend Bruce Lee, who in retrospect seemed poised for stardom given his incandescent work here was killed on set by an accident with a prop gun. Death haunted the film both inside and out and echoed the superhero comics of the period, which in short order killed uh, Superman, he recovered, and broke back Batman's back. He recovered too. Um, four years later, we got Blade, which was the first in sort of a line of um, Marvel movies. Uh, two years after Blade, X-Men, um, the first X-Men film came out, it obviously ended up becoming its own franchise, um, and so it is sort of seen as the first, in a, uh, like the first film um, in the golden age of superhero films. Um, just a year after, um, it came out just a year after Batman and Robin. So we all know how notoriously bad that film is, um, 
and does say here, just a year after Joel Schumacher's camp throwback, Batman and Robin supposedly killed the superhero genre, a vampire hunter brought it back from the dead. Uh, in Stephen Norrington the Blade, Wesley Snipes is the titular Marvel Comics vampire hunter, a half vampire daywalker who uses the creature's own abilities against them. He has battle with the undead ringleader, Deacon Frost, whose blood drenched movie opening attack on a rave club is a late 90s Gonzo's Delight. Although it spawned two successful sequels, Blade rarely gets the credit it deserves for serving as proof of concept for the potential success of Marvel's characters, including comparatively obscure characters of colour. Uh, I think that's also something to mention too, is that before Blade, all of those other ones were white actors, so who is the first uh, African American superhero. Uh, the next year we got the first Matrix film, it is on this list, um, because if you want to read into it, basically by manipulating the, the Matrix and, and being able to like, teach himself Kung Fu, in, I mean that sort of thing, by just downloading it into his brain, uh, Neo is basically Superman. Um, it says here, its superficial trappings are more cyberpunk than superhero, and it was a new story rather than an adapted one, but The Matrix was a major turning point that belongs in any conversation about the genre. The movie is the washing ideas and styles that were in vogue at the time, conspiracy theories, the rise of the dark web, hacking, rave culture, electronica, its highly influential bullet time blend of CGI, slow motion and swirling cameras was a lightsaber level of Bex innovation. Meanwhile, Keanu Reeves, who played the unlikely, unlikely ha hacker messiah Neo, brought Zen chillness to his role as a as a cyber superman destined to overthrow the machines. Uh, with its offbeat lead and advanced technology, it opened the door for the boom to come. Uh, then, as I said, 2000s we had X-Men. Um, with all apologies to Blade, which preceded it, and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man franchise, which followed it. Uh, this is the movie that kicked off the Marvel era. Based on characters and concepts created by a small army of writers and artists, X-Men cruelly established the template that so many superhero movies subsequently followed. It, its battles rely on bombast and spectacle rather than careful choreography, an attempt to convey the raw power of its mutant heroes and villains. The costumes carry a heavy-duty uniform vibe. Uh, it also established the necessity of boiling the often incomprehensible goings on with a white-hot charismatic lead, in this case the then unknown Australian actor Hugh Jackman. Uh, in this film and its sequel, director Brian Singer played, played up the comics theme of, of oppression and rebellion, using it as an allegory for coming out as an LGBTQ person, sexual assault accusations against the director, uh, which he has denied, complicate the message considerably, by the time that message resonated, and that could convince critics and audiences that superhero movies can have something to say, um, which obviously is very important for it. Um, the next on the list, 2004's, 2004's The Incredibles, the first animated uh, superhero film, uh, at least as far as this list is showing us, I'm not sure if there was any before that. There might have been some DC cartoons, but this one's sort of the first computer graphics animated one. So, understand what I'm saying there. Um, after live action superheroes began dominating the box office, an alliance between the genre and the performance purveyors of children's entertainment was probably in inevitable. Enter The Incredibles, the director of Redbird's Disney Pixar extravaganza. Uh, the film is a story of two, so two retired superheroes turned suburban parents forced back into action by a berserk fan turned supervillain. The idea of a family unit as a superhero team resonated with parents and children alike, while conservatives embraced the movie's theme about the children individuals who were forced to the sidelines by an everyone gets a trophy culture. Perhaps most important, the unmatched craft of Pixar's animators proved that big screen superheroes could work just as well as cartoons as they did in Flesh and Blood, launching an entirely new uh, genre offshoot best represented by the Despicable Me franchise and its ubiquitous minions. Despicable Me I'm fine with, the minions can just 
can we not talk about them? Uh, the other thing too that this brings up is that it does mention uh, the family unit as a superhero team. Uh, this side. That's the Fantastic Four. Um, and if you look at their powers, um, take Dash out and we're only looking at Jack-Jack's fire powers and the strength, the elasticity, the girl that can turn invisible and has force fields, and then obviously, as I said, Jack-Jack's fire powers. Uh, and then, essentially, Syndrome would be Doctor Doom in that case, and then the Underminer coming out at the end of that film would be a reference to the fact that the first comic book for the Fantastic Four was Mole Man, who lived underground. Um, now, I'm not saying that The Incredibles is Fantastic Four, but The Incredibles are the Fantastic Four. Um, 2008 gave us Iron Man and The Dark Knight, and I really don't need, think I need to say anything about that. Iron Man kicked off the MCU and it was always intended to be the MCU because it doesn't even have a post credit scene the bit where Nick Fury says that he's talking to him about the Avengers that he did is the last scene before the credits and the Dark Knight had to play this joker um, we, can, we can move on um, 2017 had Wonder Woman 2018 had Black Panther um, bringing us sort of the first um, properly, like, female-led superhero film and our first predominantly uh, all-black cast for a superhero film. Um, obviously, major leaps forward in representation. Uh, and they are actually the, the last ones on the list. Um, so, I will read these last bits here. Since 2008, the superhero genre has achieved near total cultural hegemony and it did so by settling into rigorous house styles for the two major players. Disney Marvel's movies have the work and remote playfulness of a good syndicated TV action series while Warner Brothers DC efforts are best described in the words of Joker, why so serious? Superhero movies of the Obama years offer little in the way of long lasting creative uh, accomplishments. Um, then the president changed and superhero movies appeared to follow suit. Set in fictional African superpower Wakanda, 2018's Black Panther, directed by Ryan Coogler, is, was the year's highest grossing movie, um, sorry, was at the time the highest grossing movie uh, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Released the year before, 20, uh, in 2017, Wonder Woman by Patty Jenkins and did Justice League, the blockbuster for which it was supposed to serve as a tease. Um, Previously, the near-explosive domain of white men, uh, blockbuster cinema got a serious shake-up when those movies outshone their peers. Um, and I mean, they outshone their peers because they were breaking that mold, um, treating gigantic corp uh, corporate products of this sort as a standing for progressivism can be deceptive. Wonder Woman, for example, um, valorized. The senseless slaughter of World War I into a tale of good guys and bad guys, but the thrill and power of seeing blockbuster superhero movies take steps towards inclusivity is undeniable. Um, yeah. Did I. At the time, obviously, if you're on a particular side, like she was on the side of the English, uh, so she would have seen the Germans as the bad guys. That's sort of how wars work. Uh, is one person believes that they are right about something, or the other person believes that they are right about another thing. Those two ideas conflict. Um, good guys and bad guys. It's just that each side believes that they're the good guy. Um, yeah. Um, however, uh, my main heave with Wonder Woman was that they very quickly just threw Ares in in what was supposed to be, I'm sure, a shock twist at the end so that they could have the big 
team up battle, uh, um, the big battle that they've been leading up to. Um, but I think that that would have been a, um, a much more interesting battle had they saved Ares for potentially uh, Wonder Woman 3. Um, keep, keep Wonder Woman 2 is what it's going to be. I'm pretty excited for that film. Um, but I would like to see Dr. Poison be the one, uh, and, and the twist ending there being that despite thinking that it was the world of man, and that, that, and that they were the ones, you know, fighting and stuff, you know, kill the god of war and men will stop fighting, only for it to turn out to be a woman leading it in Dr. Poison. Um, I think that could have been a really cool little twist, personally. She could then continue to believe that she did kill Ares, only for then Ares to turn up later down the road with all of his powers and stuff. Um, potentially leading the new gods, or like on the side of the new gods, considering Ares is a god himself. We'll never get that. We'll never get that now, but that could have been cool to see. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you want to see more videos like this, you can be alerted when I upload new ones. Uh, and as I said before, please uh, check out the links in the description below. Um, and uh, donate if you can to Febfast. It's an amazing uh, cause. Um, and I wouldn't be... Uh, trying to sell it so hard if I didn't fully believe in it. Um, so please definitely uh, check that out, help me out there. Uh, and until next time guys, keep your head screwed on.